Hello and welcome. I'm Coach Newton. Welcome to Saturday Morning Code with Coach. There's the bus. Get on board. We're going to create some fun projects in Scratch together. And while we're doing some of that creation, we'll have some fun, learn a little bit about coding, share some projects. So I'm really happy you're here. Uh, let's talk about what we're using. We're going to be using scratch.mit.edu. Welcome to episode 13. It's a great tool. Hopefully you have your accounts. If not, uh, talk to your parents about creating your Scratch account. And uh, looking at previous episodes are available on YouTube of all the other episodes as well. So you can kind of catch up if you'd like and see what we've done. So I uh, would love to have you join us. And uh, the community guidelines is something I always like to point out to people. So just remember to be respectful, constructive. We're going to be sharing. And uh, never share your uh, private information that's uh, considered something that's uh, identifying to you uh, on any platform. This is not just specific to Scratch. So it's just good to keep in mind and be honest. And of course, friendly. That's the key, right? Um, so let's talk a little bit about what are we doing this week, project theme. So if you can find the Saturday Morning Code with Coach Studio, so if your parents subscribe to the newsletter, you'll get a, a kind of a prep link to what we're working on. But even without that, you can watch this uh, video and again, pause when you need to. I'm going to go pretty quickly to introduce this idea. The project I'm using today is going to be the one I'm being tracked. So I clicked, I'm going to leave this open. I clicked on that and here I am on I'm being tracked. So the theme idea here is um, writing code that tracks a dynamic location of your sprite. So I can explain dynamic. So we're going to create uh, a game-like environment where it doesn't always have to be a game. It can be a story, but the keys uh, are being used to move your character sprite. So someone's playing your project and they're moving around. So you need to write code where you don't know in advance where you want another sprite to appear. So it needs to track and know the position of this sprite that the person's controlling and it's dynamic. That means it can always be changing. So there are some little things you can do in there. I just want you to be aware of it and it gives you ideas for things you can do um, in your own project. So let's get into the coding. So if you went ahead and clicked on it, right, I'll see it again. We're doing track. Last week we did secret. So tracked and followed. I clicked on that and it took me to I'm being tracked code launch project. Uh, go ahead and remix that click remix that makes your own little copy of it okay and you'll see I've started with um, some sprites here as well so um, you don't have to use any of these honestly I'm gonna use them just because I kind of have them in place and I'm using a little bit of a Jurassic theme uh, but those of you that are experienced and know how to change the stage or the background feel free to do so uh, these are the sprites I'm gonna be using so this tracked and followed you'll notice I already put kind of a show block here and a hide. So I'll let you in your own projects. I'm, I'm going to ask everyone to share what they did when I get back in the, the May live stream. I'm going to review your projects. So please do add your projects by clicking on the button there and put it in the studio. Even if you're not done, I'd love to see it. So I'm going to go ahead for this sprite. I've selected the text and I'm going to hide it. So right away, I just, uh, I'm not going to, uh, use that in today's example. I'm going to try to kind of focus on the coding with all of you. And then my main sprite that's going to move around is this dinosaur. And I kind of liked him because he's got a lot of kind of fun little kind of fun little costumes. So maybe we can use that as part of our our coding. So you can pick whatever costume you want there. And then his nemesis that's going to be tracking him a little bit is going to be this Triceratops. So you'll also notice there are a couple a couple different costumes here that if you want to play with the animation. I'm using this one because it reminds me of a charging Triceratops. So he's going to be kind of coming after uh, this dinosaur. And then we're going to add a little bit more as well. So I'm going to start with the main dinosaur, the 
one that's going to be interactively controlled for movement. And a lot of you remember in my backpack for my program, I've saved the script for movement. It just saves time in these videos. So I can kind of uh, put this code in here for my main dinosaur. And for, for those of you that are learning, we're using the down key to move down by changing the Y position, up by going positive Y, right is changing the X uh, by a positive number, and left is a minus number. So if I click this block of code here, you can see it's kind of highlighted. It means the computer is now running this forever loop, and it's waiting for me to touch the arrow keys. Okay. So one of the things you could do is if you want to kind of have fun with it, is uh, you notice it's the same costume he's moving around. Um, I think it's always fun to try to animate a little bit. So I'm going to just do this shorthand here, but in your programs, I'd say, you know, since this has lots of different costumes, every time I press, um, whoops, I'm going to put it somewhere else. Hold on. I'm, I want it to, if I'm moving up or down, I'm not going to change his costume, but when I go left and right, I'm going to tell the computer um, to change his costume and go to the next costume in the list. So that's what this command here does. In the looks commands, if you click looks and kind of scroll down, you'll see it next costume. So every time I press the right key, here he is. Look, he's kind of changing costumes. If I press up, he doesn't go down. But if I go right, he changes. And I also, when he goes left, I want him to change costumes. So if I just kind of go left and right, look at that. He's kind of animated. He's kind of like, he looks like a pretty wild dinosaur. If I go up, he doesn't do anything. So it's up to you. You can put next costume on all the key presses. But this is how you can kind of make start making your animated movement. So he's going to be, I think we're kind of good there for now. Uh, I just wanted to make sure you had something that has your character moving. We haven't done any tracking yet. So the tracking is going to be done. Um, let's have a starting point for our dinosaur, right? So uh, let's see, I'm going to drag him to here. Now, this game is the Triceratops are going to be kind of launching from the bottom. Um, so you want to give yourself a little bit of time to react. So, gosh, I'm almost putting him in the very middle of the screen. So let's click the motion and do a go to X and Y of 0 and 0. So a lot of you have seen this before. So that's a starting point. So when someone starts the program, he's there in the middle, um, and you can define how... He looks based on his costume, so you can pick a costume that you'd like. Uh, and again, I'm not coding every step, so that way I get to see how you all have uh, decided to customize. So I'm going to do a save now, just so that way I don't lose my progress. So that's why I always recommend logging into Scratch, so you don't lose your progress. And let's go now and code the protagonist. Okay, So this is uh, going to be dinosaur, uh, the dinosaur number uh, dinosaur 2, I guess it's called. And we're going to be doing quite a bit of coding on him. So let's take a look at, um, I'm just checking my notes here. Of like, which, where did I want to start with him? So, oops, sorry, I think I'm moving the wrong window. <laughs> okay, so we need a starting point along the bottom, right? So that was a little bit of a clue. So the bottom location, if you kind of drag it to where you want him to start, I'm just going to kind of put him here in the middle Oh, there's zero. You know what? Since I know my main character starts there, the first time I have this little guy, I'm going to kind of put him down here. And since he's going to be launching and kind of tracking wherever I am, uh, I'm going to put him kind of just where his head's tucked under so I can see these coordinates here and use that as my starting location. So that's what I did. So it's kind of nice by dragging the sprite, this block of motion code gets updated with that location. So he's there, and we want him to appear when the green flag is pressed. And here's the tricky part. I'm going to hide him. So we're going to be using clones that are going to be tracking, not actually this sprite. Clones are copies of this sprite. So I'm going to go down to looks and grab a show and a hide, because once I hide, I know I need some show commands. So now I've hidden him. So if I click this block of code, he is there, but he's hidden. If you click the show, you can tell there he's at. So that's just kind of my starting point. Now, what we're going to do is I want him to forever kind of jump to a random position somewhere along this bottom of this screen and then come, come after me with the clones. 
So let's let's code that part. So I need a forever loop. You notice I mentioned um, a control, this third one forever, and we're going to have him go to a new motion location, and we're going to say go to a random position. Now normally if I click that, he can go anywhere on the screen, but right, we don't want that to kind of happen necessarily, unless that's what you want for your game. I want him always spawning, but from a random location along the bottom. So I'm doing two steps. First, I say go to a random location, but then I'm going to tell the computer, you know what? But go to the lowest Y position down here. And this is why I dragged earlier. You notice the Y that we liked was like a minus 186. So here we go. We're going to do set Y. So we do a set Y to, and let's type that number in, minus 186. 86. So that forever goes there. Okay. And again, this is where, uh, at this point, let me do a show and just run this block of code. And you notice there he is. Look, he's forever kind of jumping to a new, very fast new location. But I just wanted you to see that the randomness is kind of working. And he's always starting from the bottom of the screen. And we got to we have a little bit of a hint that he's coming after us because we're going to be trying to move our blue dinosaur away. Um, so here's where we're going to use the cloning. So cloning is make a copy of yourself. So the clones are down here at the bottom of the control. So remember, when you click the control, you scroll here with the scroll bar, and we're going to need all three clone commands. When I start as a clone, create a clone, and then we need to always delete a clone as well. Okay. So this is the loop of code where we're telling the computer, you know what, create a clone of myself. And you notice the forever loop was very fast. So we're going to make it wait a little bit. So click on control and that very top command. So in the beginning, we're going to make it more challenging. But in the beginning, we're going to say, wait two seconds. So that means we won't get a clone coming after us uh, consistently non-stop we have two seconds before the next clone is coming towards us so this is the code that just kind of creates the clone later i recommend um, in my little test i put this as a random number so that way it's not always spawning boom every two seconds it makes a lot more fun of a game if you use the random operator oh, let me go ahead and put that in there now why not we're talking about it i'll show you how to do it it's a math operator, and here's the random. So for games, random makes it really interesting. So this says, hey, how long before I spawn the next one? So I'm going to start with an easy game, 0.5 to 2 seconds. So it'll be random between that time. So sometimes it'll be half a second, and all of a sudden you get an another dinosaur appearing. So if you want it more frequently, make this first number smaller and the second number smaller as well, and you'll get more and more. But You'll, you'll see what will happen when we start coding the next steps. Okay, so this kind of works, um, but it's creating a clone, and this sprite is hidden, and we haven't told the computer what to do um, when he starts as a clone. So we need to work on that code next, okay? So let's add code here. So I'm going to do a stop, because this forever loop is running. I kind of want it to stop. I'm going to save my progress. And let's move this out of the way. So let's see. I'm trying to think of on the screen. Uh, I want to be careful not to drag it over here because you'll just delete your code. So I'm trying to make a little space so you can see it. Because we're going to have a long string of commands for the computer because we want it to do a lot of cool stuff. So first, when it starts as a clone, we want it to show. Right? So that way, when I get a clone, these clones, I want them to be visible. Okay? And this is where a little bit of the tracking starts is... I want my clone to point towards my uh, creature. So that's in the blue uh, motion commands. And not pointing in a certain direction, but point towards. So this says point towards, and not the mouse pointer in this case. We want it to point towards dinosaur 5. So whatever sprite you've picked that's uh, going to be targeted, uh, that the person is moving to get away, just make sure it points towards that um, sprite. So in my case, it's it's that one. Okay. So let's just say, if I click the green flag, there he is. He's kind of pointed upside down towards him. <laughs> He's there. Now, every two seconds, look, there are more that are appearing, right? Because we kind of said, hey, every random amount, 
they're starting to appear and they're facing my guy. Okay, so I'm going to stop. And now, now we need to kind of add the movement a little bit and some fun special effects. So we're going to need another forever block. So I'm going to, I'm saving my delete. We need another forever block. So every clone, we want to kind of have moving towards us. So it's going to, when it spawns as a clone, it's going to show point towards our guy and then start moving. So this is the motion and I'm going to use steps. Now, this is where if you want to make it super hard, um, you could make it big steps. I'm going to do four for now just to try it. Okay. Now, if we kind of just run this, let's see what it does. There's my clone. And now remember with the arrow keys, I can move my dinosaur. Remember? And look, they're kind of coming at me and they're tracking me, right? So if I just sit over here, they point towards me and come towards me, right? So you can't just pick a safe spot on the screen because we've made it so we're being tracked, right? That's why I called it being tracked. It's pointing towards us and moving in that direction. So if I just sit here, it's kind of dangerous, right? So you'll notice that, hey, we're buying ourselves some time here. I'm going to stop. Um, and if I click the green flag, I'm going to get it. Okay, so I hope you kind of saw how that's working with the four steps. Now, you'll notice that suddenly they started, the, the sprites started, the clones started accumulating here at the top, the triceratops. We need to make them go away, um, but we also need some conditions that say, hey, what if I do touch dinosaur five? Um, I want to play a sound, score some points, whatever you decide. So we're going to need some if statements, some conditionals. So we're also going to say, you know what? Um, we're going to be dropping some, I'm going to use crystals that our player can drop to stop the Triceratops. So if the Triceratops uh, gets touched by a crystal, he stops his chase. So we'll have some mechanism to protect ourselves other than just running. Um, so... We need another if statement for that. We'll be checking. So I'm kind of stacking these ifs. These are all going to go inside the forever. And then I need something that says, well, suppose I've dodged it and the um, Triceratops has gone off the top of the screen. So I need another if statement that says, well, if he's gone off the top of the screen, I also maybe want to play a sound and have him disappear. So let's start putting these conditions in here. So the first one you notice I mentioned was, Hey, if he's touching the dinosaur. So let's do that. That's the first thing. Like I want him to move and have the computer check. Did you touch dinosaur five? If you did, I want to play like a bonk sound. So I'm just going to play pop since the sound is here, but I'm going to say start that sound. Okay. So he'll, he'll start that sound if he touched the dinosaur and then he'll delete himself. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to need a couple of deletes because in all these cases. So if he touches the dinosaur, he plays a pop sound, uh, and then he deletes. So this is where you could lose points or, or the enemy gets points. You can, you can add that to your program. So I'm really curious what you do. And then we're going to add another sprite that if it touches the crystals, and since we don't have the crystals, we kind of can't do that one yet. But um, if it touches the crystals, it also will delete. We have to create that sprite. I forgot to add that. Let's add that next. And then this is the, let's finish this. If he goes off the top of the screen, let's finish that one. So that is if the Y position, remember the Y here measures the top. If it gets up to about um, 170, it's basically the Triceratops has made it to the top of the screen. We also want him to basically stop and disappear. So you could add a sound if you want. I did in one of my test programs, but for now I just wanted you to, see the basics and, and you can enhance your code. So we need a Y position that's in the motion. Scroll down. It's one of the last ones. And since it's an oval, that means it's a variable. That means that number is always changing because remember the Y position for a moving character, it could be in different places as it's moving up along the screen. And then we need the math operator to check. Did I go off of the top? So you'll notice I said if the Y is greater than, so here's where I'm checking, like, hey, is this Y position? I'll put it inside. And you see I can, instead of typing in a number, I can say, if the Y position is greater than, now I used 170. Um, that means he's gone off the top of the screen and I want him to delete. 
okay? And I'm going to put all of these. Let's do this. This will make it easier so there's fewer mistakes. I'm always moving, but as I move, I'm checking for these three things, right? Touching my dinosaur. Um, if I touch the crystals, I want it to disappear. That's my protective crystals. Or if I, I've gone off the top of the screen. So if you have other conditions in your story, you just keep stacking more if statements in there. And you want the computer checking these forever. Now let's see if this runs. I'm not sure what it'll do here if I have this one that's a non-plugged in condition. Let's give it a try. It looks like it kind of works. And you notice I'm kind of running away. And these guys are kind of coming after me. And, and if they get me, it plays the pop sound. This is harder than I thought. They're kind of moving kind of fast towards me. And you notice we randomized how often they appear. So, And they always come from a different location, but they point towards us and come after us. So you're kind of constantly running away. But you notice if you just kind of hang out near the top, it buys you the most amount of time. Don't worry. We're going to add a challenge that makes you move off of the top. Okay. Um, so anyway, so this is so far it looks like it's working, right? So if you made a game that you're trying to catch these dinosaurs, that works too. I'm doing the opposite where I want it to get away from these guys, right? But you could make a game where you're like, hey, um, these, the thing is they're flying towards me. So that would be kind of a boring game if you scored points because you could just stand here and they've gotten you, right? So this is, this is my blue dinosaur being tracked. Okay, so even with this not in here. All right, let's add some protective crystals, okay? Now, this is where uh, we're going to use the the tracking commands that we really haven't done before in some of the classes I've taught with students. So I want to show you this. So pay, pay close attention um, if you've been to some of my classes and you're like, wait a minute, what's he talking about? And even if you're new, welcome. Uh, hopefully you probably already know about this. Let's choose a sprite. And I think I mentioned I'm using crystals. So I like crystal. There are a couple, two different costumes there. Uh, I'm using the small ones. Okay, so now that I've added the crystals, let's just go back to the dinosaur. Let's kind of finish that code a little bit uh, for the dinosaur. So now we could say sensing if touching if touching crystal, um, it will also delete the clone. Okay, so that way it will delete if it touches the crystal. So let's just see if I put the crystal here um, and I run my program. And I dodge it. Look at that. They're kind of coming towards me. I could hide behind the crystal. Ha -ha. So that's like my secret defense for right now. But this is a good test, right? Is my code working? You could make a fun game out of this. You're safe behind the bat. Like you could like run out, get the treasure, try to get back to the safe spot. Right? There's all sorts of different things you could do. I can hide behind this tree and you can't get me. Uh -huh. Anyway, so we're going to make that more dynamic. Don't worry. So I just was testing it, having a little fun. So let's take a look at the crystals as well. So this is where um, I thought it would be interesting to kind of show you a certain code that as this dynamic location is moving, this crystal, I'm sorry, let's go. As we're moving our dinosaur around the screen, I want the crystals to kind of launch from the top of the screen above me. So they're kind of like a scatter crystal. So I'll show you what I mean here. So first, let's go to, you know, we always need that green flag. Um, I want the crystal to show, let's just make sure it's there, um, to show. And now we're going to need a forever loop. And we're going to be using clones again. So I'm just going to put the forever in there since I know I'm going to be using it. So this is the code that I wanted to show people uh, if we haven't done this. Normally, if we say, you know, go to a certain location, but I want it to always be above his head at the very top of the screen. Well, right now we know where he is, but the player is going to be moving around. So that X location is going to be changing. Well, where does the computer tell me where that X location is? So I'll show you. We're going to go to go to X and Y. So this is if you had a fixed number that was always the same. Uh, this is pretty handy. I'm going to put the Y location at the top of the screen. So let me try 190. If I click on that, you'll see there's the crystal at 190. But here's the tricky one. Let's go to sensing. This code here, uh, scroll down. Sensing has a lot of blocks, and a lot of times we use many of these. But I want you to scroll down. This is a tricky one. I didn't discover this for a long time until somebody used it in a program. I was like, wait a minute. This is an odd one. It's oval, so you know it's a variable. There's some kind of value that's going to be in there. 
but it's a dynamic value and you can choose from many things. So this is a powerful block that I urge you to like practice looking at coming up with ideas of how you would use the code. And it's a little bit deceiving because it starts with this backdrop name of a stage, but we're going to be using not stage, but we're going to use the sprite. So the sprite that we're using the exposition of is dinosaur five. So change the stage to dinosaur five and notice that these options now change to different things. So this is where the computer will say, oh, I can always tell you what the X position is or the Y position. I can tell you what direction the dinosaur is facing, what costume number is, what his na costume name is, what size he is. These are all values. So we want the X position. And then you'll notice it's an oval, right? So we're going to put it inside of the X. So let's put that inside there. So make sure it goes into the X and not the Y. And what that does is that tells them to go there. And I'm going to put it inside the forever loop. So I just want you to see what that does, right? So now as I move him, look at how he's following me at the very top, right? So if I go left or right in this forever loop, he's always tracking my X position. And I told the Y to always be 190. So he stays at the top. So he's my little indicator of like, okay, where my, my protective crystals will launch from. So I can no longer hide behind him really. Ah. The, the uh, they still get me, right? Okay, so we have the protector there, but we need to launch clones, you guessed it, right? So inside this forever loop, what we're gonna do to launch the clones, um, let me make sure I'm on the right code, is I want to do that if I press the space key. So this is where you can kind of decide what you're gonna do. So we need a conditional, um, an if then statement, right? And we need the sensing again. And we're going to say if um, key space press, let me click on sensing. It's this one here. And I am using the space bar, but if you just design your own game, you can press any letter, right? So if the space key is pressed, I want five clones of the crystal to appear. Well, how do I make something happen five times on the computer? Well, a lot of you remember how to do that, but I'll show you. Remember, we're doing clones, so I need all three clone commands. Attack of the clones. Okay, and I need a repeat, also a control block. So this is where you can decide how big of a shield do you want to protect. So I'm doing five. Uh, let's try four. Let's, uh, I'm going to do a small shield. So I need four clones to get created of myself. Okay? And then I don't want to have the person be able to spam the, the shield because if you keep hitting the space key, it'll be four clones, four clones, four clones. So I want there to be a delay. So this is where you have to pick after it creates four clones, what's the delay before you're allowing your player to deploy another shield? Um, and, you, and you'll see what I mean um, by that. Um, so uh, sorry, my dog's barking. Um, so I'm trying one second. And, and remember, we can always kind of mess with this later. And again, you can fine tune your program. So I'm putting this inside of here and it needs to be inside the forever loop. OK, so this says, hey, this is our main guy and I'm going to create a clone if someone hits a space key and then it and it does four clones. Well, just like before, we need to tell the computer what to do when the clones appear. Okay. Remember, we need the clone to also be uh, starting up top here above the head of the dinosaur, right? So it's also this piece of code. So I kind of want to copy that code again. So let me pull that out. Yikes. It'll be easier than kind of digging and putting all the pieces. I'm going to right click and duplicate. So when I start as a clone, I want it to go to that location. Let's see if we can put it together, right? Because remember, this is the code that spawn that, that creates the very first sprite of the crystal. And then it says, hey, go create four clones or as many as you, you create. Um, but every clone, I need to kind of go to this starting location uh, also forever inside of a forever loop. So we're going to need another forever loop. I'm going to move this code up. Uh, I'm going to make some room here so we can kind of stack it. 
I need more room for this code. So again, you can always pause the, the video if you need to um, kind of see the code better. And I'm going to scroll down because I need to put a lot of code here. So I need the forever loop, right? Let's do a forever loop. And I need these crystals to be moving. So they're going to be, um, let's see, I want them to move. Now, it depends on how fast you want them. I'm just going to go with four for now. And remember, I kind of want this inside the forever loop. I'm going to make the crystals flash with a little bit of a change color effect by. So I don't know. I'm doing a forever change color effect by four or five. Mess around with it. See what you like. And it moves. And the other thing is it's moving steps. So we need to make sure the crystals are pointed downwards. So we need that motion that says point. Every time a clone is created, point in the direction. Now, oops, let's put this up here. And if you look at it, right, I can, I can go straight down 180, but I'm going to use a little bit of randomness here as well to make it fun. So that means each crystal, when I launch, these four clones won't all, they won't all just go straight down on top of each other. I kind of want them to randomly fan out, so it'll be different each time. So I kind of want another random set of numbers. Um, and let's pick something between um, 180 was straight down. So something less than straight down is 170, and 10 degrees past 180 is 10 plus 180 is 190. So this makes each clone pick a different direction pointing downwards before it does the moving. Okay, so let's just see what happens here with this code. It's not quite complete yet, but I want you to see the effect. So oh, these guys are getting me. So you'll notice the top... Now, I haven't hit the space bar. I'm going to hit the space bar. Boom, there's my protective shield. And you look, you notice that they take out the, the, the dinosaurs, right? So every time I'm hitting the space key, but remember, I put in that one second delay. And what I like about this effect is notice at the very top, if I hit the space key, there's that one second lag. That's how you know you can't launch again, right? It's kind of waiting for one second. So if you want to make it, uh, and you'll notice all the crystals are accumulating down here at the bottom because we didn't add the delete this clone. So you kind of have this glowing ground of crystal <laughs> clones that are here permanently. But uh, I think we want to delete them because the computer kind of starts running out of memory if the, if the clones last forever. But it is kind of a cool effect. Uh, I'm going to save now. So I want, the cl uh, I want the clones to disappear if they get to the bottom of the screen. So we're going to do another um, if-then Right. If the Y position, we need that motion Y position. If the Y position is less than, so we need the math, less than. Now this is where the bottom of the screen is like minus 170, 180. So I'm going to say if it's less than minus, if it's below minus 160, if that ever happens for the clone while it's moving, then delete it. So this is constantly checking, did you go to the bottom of the screen inside the forever loop? Now let's see if this worked. I'm going to do a save now. Let's try it. Oh, i got to run away first. Hit the space bar. Uh, you see how it takes out my little my triceratops that are trying to chase me, right? Um, and you, have you, as you've noticed, uh, I could kind of hide out near the top. I can't always launch the crystals. So this is where, you, if you want more Triceratops to come after you, we have to change that, that delay, remember, in the beginning. But look, if you just try to camp out here, these guys are going to lock in on you, and you got to launch these crystals, but you only get one every one second. So you can make this game harder by changing how often you can launch. So I'm trying to spam it, but again, I can only launch a few, and they're kind of spreading out, right? And you saw kind of the color changes that we picked. So... So I've made part of the game. Um, I was going to leave it up to you to see if you can figure out. Um, I'll go ahead and quickly do it. I'll go ahead and quickly do it. Um, so I wanted to create also some more tracking. This is dynamic tracking, right? That, that this crystal at the top follows me based on the X position of the dinosaur. Well, I want a little guy coming after me to keep me from just camping at the top that I need to dodge. Um, or you could create 
a different story where there's some kind of food at the bottom that you need to kind of get to uh, to replenish yourself so you can't just hide up at the top and try to uh, avoid the triceratops. I created a version where um, you got to dodge uh, these little guys kind of flying at you. So let's add that really quickly. I know it adds a little more time. You can skip this part, come back to the video if you want. But you need a sprite. So what is this sprite going to be? So let's figure out, let's see, if I choose a sprite, um, let me fix my screen here. Fantasy, I wanted to see what dinosaurs, let's see, I had dino. Let me type dino. Um, oh, here we go. I don't want this guy getting me. This could be kind of cool if he comes flying across the screen. And that kind of makes sense if I'm trying to camp up at the top. All right. So he's our other nemesis. He's kind of too big. So I'm going to shrink him down. Let's try 40. And again, you pick your own sprites. That's not bad. That's a good flying little pterodactyl. Dinosaur 3 he is. Okay, so let's let's code Dinosaur 3. So I need a starting location. So where did our game start? Our guy kind of starts here in the middle. So I don't want him to get hit right away. Um, so let's do something where... Um, he has a starting location up here, so I'm dragging him to the starting location, okay? So this is my pterodactyl starting location, so I like to go to the motion, and that's the location, 200 and 161 for the coordinates. I need the green flag that says go there. Um, and then we're going to be doing move. Let's see, am I going to be doing move? Yeah, I'm going to be doing move. 10 steps, um, and I'm going to kind of have him always flying. Let's see, let's have him point the other direction. Let's say point in direction. If I do minus 90, where is he? Oh, he flips upside down. I guess we almost don't need to do that. Minus 90 makes it so he's pointing this way. I'll fix that. Some of you know, if you go to direction, you can click here and make it a left and right sprite because I'm only having the pterodactyl fly left and right anyway. And the reason I did point in minus 90 is since I'm starting in this corner and then every time I move, he's going to move this way across the screen. So that's kind of why I did that. Okay. And we're going to need a show and hide because we're going to be doing a little bit of showing. We want him to randomly appear. So in the beginning, I do want him to show so he points in that direction. So here's my initialization, right? I'm setting up the game. So there, if I click on this code, it kind of is like, yep, that's where I want him. And, and if I kind of do the movement, he's moving in the direction I want. So you have to kind of play with these values. So the movement's going to be a forever movement. So we need a forever loop. Might as well just drag that out. And I'm going to move, I don't know, it depends how aggressive you want him to kind of fly across the screen towards you to make the dinosaur dodge. Um, 10 might be kind of fast. Let's see if I can survive 10. I'll try 10. But just remember, change this number if your game ends up being too hard. And again, he's going to fly across the screen. And there, right? So I need the computer. We need to put in our code. We need to check. Did he get to the edge? Right? Um, so we need it to check if it hit the edge. So that's why you make sure your sprite doesn't start. On the edge I think uh, let me just double check that otherwise we'll be in trouble oh yeah I think I better move them over a little bit more that should be the starting location what is that 188 X of 188 so make sure your your sprite isn't already hitting the edge because we're going to put a conditional where the computer checks if he's touching edge so here's another sensing block and I don't know if a lot of you have used this before, but you can say if touching edge. Now, remember, that can be any edge. So just be aware, any corner of the screen. But we're checking just because we're having our sprite go left and right. So if touching the edge, that's where I want him to hide. And then I want him to wait. Now, in this case, I'm just uh, not putting a random number, but you can. I would recommend doing that. I'm doing two seconds. And then this is where it gets dynamic, right? We're gonna, this person's going to be moving his dinosaur around. So he's going to be moving, who knows, anywhere on the screen. And I want the pterodactyl to launch 
towards him no matter where he's at. So that's the tracking. He's being tracked. So we kind of use that special sensing command that we discussed today, right? We drag this out. It's a variable. You have to pick the sprite that he's tracking. He's tracking dinosaur four. And this time he's tracking the Y position where he is up and down. So this guy is going to come out of this right side of the screen and go towards our dinosaur. So we need the Y position and our pterodactyl is going to go to that. So we need a motion. So we're going to say go to the Y position. So I'm going to move this so you can see. It definitely needs to go into this Y value. So that's dynamic. The computer will always be updating this number with wherever the dinosaur is. And then we always want it to be to the far right side. And we kind of know what that number was. The X was 185. So our pterodactyl, the way we're writing this code right now, it'll always start on the right side, but will be in a different Y depending on where we're at. And that'll keep us from just camping up at the top of the screen. This will make it a lot more challenging. So then we say, okay, that's after waiting two seconds, go to where we're at, and then show. We need another show block because we need him to reappear. And, you know, then, then he'll come out of this if and be inside the move, and then the move 10 happens. Does that make sense? So let's just test this code by clicking it. Waiting two seconds, he hit the edge. But look at that. Look where he moved, right? So now if I move my dinosaur, now that my game's kind of live, look, here comes the pterodactyl. So if I just, ah, I forgot to launch my crystals. So if I just camp up here, the pterodactyl's coming after me. So I kind of got to be careful. Now what I found is that's a pretty fast pterodactyl right now. Ah, whoa, I dodged them. So you can kind of come up with some strategy. I'm kind of using crystals to protect myself. And I haven't added code that says, hey, um, if, if the dinosaur gets hit by the pterodactyl, I recommend you do something. Something should happen if the pterodactyl got me. But like, ah, right, right now. Uh, but you can see where we've kind of had, we're using tracking in a couple different ways, right? To launch the protective crystals, uh, the pterodactyls tracking our, our Y location. And I just wanted you to see those cool variables there. Let's stop that. Okay. So hopefully this kind of helped um, expose you to these new commands. Again, this is in sensing. It's a variable that is pretty powerful because there are a lot of values here you can use for conditionals of sprites. Um, I've used the one, the direction of a sprite. So if you have like a baseball bat hitting a ball, but suppose the player has the bat tilted in a different direction, well, the ball has to react to the value of that direction. So then you can make things realistic. So it'll bounce off the angle of the bat and the angle is always changing because the players may be swinging the bat or uh, a magic wand, right? So if you're creating a story with a magic wand and you're making it interactive. So all sorts of cool variables in here. Uh, volume, I've never tried, so there are a lot of things I haven't tried yet. Uh, so I urge you to explore. And uh, since we're not going to be really sharing today, I kind of shared already. I wanted to say thanks for watching. Have fun. Keep coding. Code on. Your parents can reach me at code on at panucation.org. Uh, check out the Panucation website. Parents, look forward to seeing you next time. Keep creating. Appreciate you joining. Take care. Code on.